Okay. Okay. So here we are at Nix down in Yonkola, and I'm going to do just a very quick description of um, collecting cyan on grapes. I'm not going to focus at all on grape pruning. There are as many ways to prune grapes as there are to look at the sun and the, and the moon. Um, many different um, approaches. OSU's online information on grape culture is superlative. It's all freely available online. And if you're looking for information about how to grape or grape culture in general, I'd really strongly recommend looking at that. It's absolutely world class. Some of the best you'll find anywhere in the world on grape culture out of OSU. Um, but as usual, almost nothing on collecting grape cyan. So um, this is a sort of a, it's a mess, but oftentimes when you get to uh, grapevines, particularly old grapevines, you'll be confronted with something that looks a lot like this. So the first thing to keep in mind is, as usual, be sure that you're actually collecting what you think you're collecting from. Because if I come in to, for example, harvest off this particular variety here, and I start following some of the vines from it, what I'll find is that some of these vines actually come back to here. All right, so I'm talking about three plants away, in fact, even four plants away in terms of um, uh, the material being rather unruly. So be sure you know what you're collecting from. Then, when it actually comes to collecting material, we're basically looking for fresh growth, first year growth, and the same we are on, um, on apples and, and plums and pears and so on and so forth. And um, we're looking for material that's healthy. A lot of um, great material, particularly if it's been, um, if it hasn't been looked after particularly well, will, um, will have a lot of disease on it. You can basically see it. Fresh cyan material looks robust and healthy, and a lot of stuff doesn't. But um, when I'm cutting grape cyan, uh, a couple of important things to keep in mind. Um, when I make the cut, uh, what we're basically trying to do is create a cyan that has, where possible, three nodes on it. Sometimes the internode lengths are enormous and it really just sort of we can only really fit sort of two nodes into the mix. But one of the reasons for that is because the a very simple proven way for grape propagation that we've been working with a lot in recent years is to basically take a sign and stick it in a gallon pot. And typically what we're doing is we'll put it in the gallon pot, bear it to a depth, put this right in the bottom of the pot have another uh, node in the middle, and then we'll bury it up to about there. And then I'll actually also put a, oftentimes put a little dab of grafting compound on the top of the sign there to stop it transpiring too much. So typically when we're cutting sign, we're looking to cut a piece of sign about this length or, or maybe a little longer. And then crucially, when we're cutting sign and we're putting it in bunches, we're making sure that the cut on the bottom is flat and the cut on the top is angled. And the reason we do that is so that people can tell when they come along and pick up the sign which way's up and which way's down. You might think it's too easy to do that, but one of the things we find is that it's often not as easy as you might think. So here's another classic example, all right? I've got a piece of uh, material here. I'll come in, I'll cut it flat below a node at an angle above, flat below a node, at an angle above, flat below a node, at an angle above. Here I've got a number of nodes on a, on a stem, that's fine. Um, we like thick pieces of cyan. We generally find that the thick pieces of cyan take better than the skinny pieces. You can sometimes, if you're going for rare material, skinny material might be all you have. Another thing you want to look at when you're collecting a bundle of cyan is you want to make sure that they're all green on the bottom. That tells you that it's alive. Likewise, green at the top. And oftentimes you'll find if you're picking a piece of, if you're cutting a piece of cyan out, that there'll be some dead material in there. The bottom might be green, but as you move further up, the cyan might, might die, might be dead. 
And one of the ways you can, a very quick way you can determine whether the sign has integrity and is alive is you can basically bend it. If it breaks easily, or the node just starts to bend like that, or it's a little, a little bendy there, you'll basically know that the sign is, is essentially dead at that point. So on this sign what I would do is I would come down and probably just lose the rest of this. Okay, And then you can see the important thing. We've got the flatness at the bottom. That's the bit that goes down and the bits at the top are all nice. Go. Okay, so picking up where we left off, the smarty fans phone ran out of juice. So um, this is um, this is sign that I collected this morning from um, uh, a field close by. It's Marichal Fock. This is the main grape uh, 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 wine variety that we're going to be putting into the agrarian sharing network. It's very productive. It comes on early, it's sweet early, it's very reliable, very happy, so on and so forth. And it's essentially the, the, the mainstay uh, wine producing variety that we're going to be putting out in quantity. You can see what I did is I just went and collected like this to process later. So what I'll do here, again typical, is I'll come in, cut, the, cut it flat at the bottom, below a, a node, so on and so forth. You saw me do that earlier. And then I'll come in and size accordingly. Now, a couple of the things to keep in mind it, that are specific to um, uh, uh, storing grapes. Grapes have a lot of this action going on in terms of um, uh, uh, what are these called? The sort of old tendrils and so on and so forth. These are very sharp and will puncture plastic bags that you store um, grape sign in. So when we're storing grape sign, very typically what I'm doing is um, storing it inside one or two plastic bags uh, wrapped, in, wrapped inside the other and then maybe also um, I'll have a nice thick bundle of this that I'll then I'll wrap um, a rubber band around and again the usual trip throw your rubber band around one piece of cyan wrap it around tie it around another same on the bottom round wrap it around one on the other and then of course I'll also be labeling this but when you basically store this inside plastic bags of course you're going to want it to be um, airtight and I'll put a little bit of moisture in you probably saw it from the last video but do be aware that you're going to probably get punctures in plastic bags that are not really really solid so I'll typically put my cyan inside a couple of plastic bags and then I'll put that inside a large black heavy-duty bin liner and then stick it in the fridge. That way I can be sure that the sign stays stays fresh. So again, similar sort of technique for harvesting grape sign, but a few wrinkles, particularly with regard to storage, if you're gonna keep it uh, nice and happy. And then, um, before um, I put it in the ground, before we plant it, in fact, we'll typically do this before the prop fair, what I'll do is I'll take it out, I might even trim the bottom a little bit, and then I'll stick it in water for a few days to rehydrate it. What we find is that if we rehydrate it before planting it, it tenderly takes a lot better. And also, I mentioned before that I might stick one of these things in a, in a, in a gallon pot. Generally, I'll stick four or five in a gallon pot, uh, label them, and if four or five take, brilliant. If three or four take, great. Two take, fantastic. One, I've still got a plant in there. Um, that way I can really sort of use the space effectively. And uh, if, they, if more than one plant um, takes, I can then just separate them out and, uh, and put them into different pots or into the ground themselves. Or you can, of course, just stick it straight in the ground. But more, more often than not, we want to be sure that the plant's taking before we move it to a particular place. Okay, uh, again, uh, springpropagationfair.com and we'll have some links up uh, relating to grape culture and grape propagation too. How to actually um, handle the sign once you're deciding you're wanting to actually plant it and propagate it, get it started.
Okay, I think that's it.